The Great I Am, Part 4 I am the Good Shepherd. John 10, verse 11 says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is the fourth of the seven instances where Jesus invokes the I Am terminology, which implies that he is divine. In this fourth I Am statement, I Am the Good Shepherd is a separate analogy, related but not identical to the ones we discussed earlier. First, we must understand the role of a shepherd. Shepherds not only had to keep watch over the flock, to prevent them from straying, but have to defend the sheep from animals like wolves, bears, as well as thieves. Jesus used the term shepherd as a metaphor to help the people of the time understand better who he was. There had been many prophets and religious leaders who were seen as shepherds to their people, but among them were Pharisees and scribes whom Jesus identified as false and evil shepherds, whose wicked motives were rooted in hypocrisy, pride, unbelief, and selfishness. David's experience of shepherding shows that it was not easy nor safe, according to 1 Samuel 17, verses 34 to 36. But David said to Saul, Your servant, used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. David gives us an example of what is involved in shepherding sheep. Jacob narrates the struggles that a shepherd faces while attending to sheep in Genesis 31 verses 38 to 40. These twenty years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried their young and I have not eaten the rams of your flock. That which was torn by beasts, I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it. You required it from my hand, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. There I was. In the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. By proclaiming that I am the Good Shepherd, Jesus is saying, I am not a selfish shepherd who will run away, but I will stand and defend the sheep in my flock. He was contrasting himself with those shepherds who wreak havoc on the flock for their own gain. He is saying, I am not a thief. Jesus offers life and life in abundance according to John 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. As a good shepherd, he preserves and protects the life of the sheep. He puts his life on the line for the flock. Having said that, Jesus' words foreshadow the idea that his earthly mission and purpose is to die on behalf of his sheep. Jesus was a shepherd of the Father's appointing, calling, and sending to care for his sheep, the chosen ones. He was sent to find the lost sheep and was entrusted with them. He is a good shepherd, protects them from their enemies, heals all their diseases, and restores their souls. He watches the sheep in the night season, lest anything hurt them. He is the Good Shepherd, who goes out to search for the sheep when they have been driven away or scattered in the dark and cloudy day, so that he loses none, according to John 17 verse 12. While I was with them in the world, 
I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. John 10, verses 1 to 2. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The shepherd knows his sheep by name, and the sheep know the shepherd by his voice. When the shepherd gives a command, the sheep hearken to his voice and follow him. But the thief is a stranger to them, and the sheep refuse to follow the stranger. John 10 verse 5 says, Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. We must constantly develop our relationship with the Holy Spirit, as this will heighten our awareness of his voice. We should not allow our ears to be out of tune with his voice. If we do that, we are in danger of allowing other influences to permeate our lives. Remember that the stranger has an interest in us as well. He is relentlessly trying to climb into our lives through illegitimate means. He is always speaking and shouting in an attempt to crowd out the voice of the Spirit. The only counter we have to the enemy's voice is the voice of God. As the Lord sheep, we must know his voice and listen to it through our relationship. But we are also called to follow his voice in obedience. This is the truest sign of the sheep. Those of us who belong to Jesus Christ must obey his voice. Listening is not just about the entry of the words but about changing our lives to align with the words we hear. Are you committed to following the voice of the Good Shepherd? Jesus is speaking figuratively, but as he explains the parable, he introduces himself in a few variables that are of comfort to my heart as a sheep, and I know they will comfort yours as well. Firstly, Jesus states in John 10 verse 7, then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. He is the only avenue to get into the proverbial pen, which we know is the kingdom of God, that has been given to Jesus by his Father. He builds on this in John 10 verses 9 to 10, stating, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The sheep are given salvation from the stranger who is a thief, a robber, and a killer. Secondly, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd in John 10 verse 11. He is not an interim attendant to the sheep. He is the owner. Further on in the chapter, we see a third person who has an interest in the sheep. But this person's interest will not drive them to protect the sheep with his life. He is only a hired hand and doesn't care for the sheep in the same way that the shepherd does. The relationship that the shepherd has with the sheep inspires him to lay down his life for the sheep. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, Jesus declares in John 10 verse 14. Those of us who have entered through Jesus Christ into the kingdom of God are the sheep of the Lord. He cares for us. He speaks to us. He died for us. He gives us abundant life. He knows us, and we know him. It is only the sheep of Jesus that listens to his voice. Jesus is the fullness of the voice of God. We can, in a real sense, say that he is God's final word and the good shepherd. May the Lord keep you. God bless you.